I am Paul DiBartolomeo from T&J Rescue Enterprises. I'm here with the TL9 stabilizer and the Hurst hydraulic spreader, and we're going to discuss uh, another option for lifting when we have a person pinned uh, in a rollover accident. All right, so what makes this operation a little unique? In an earlier video, we talked about how to lift uh, through the triangle here with an extremity pin. Here, this person's been ejected through the windshield, and much of their body is spanning the short axis of the car. So in other words, you know, they're obviously out over here, but the rest of their body is going across the short axis. So the problem lifting from the triangle here is as we lift over here, even with our best efforts to counter crib over there, we could get some downward motion of the vehicle, thus further crushing their legs. So what we're going to try to do is find a point on the nose of this vehicle on the short axis to do a parallel lift and actually bring the whole nose up so we're not impinging the back side of their body, the lower part of their extremities there. All right, so essentially our lift point is going to be right on the nose of the vehicle here in the short axis, and we're going to bring the whole nose up. Like with any of our lifts, we got to talk about how we're going to counter crib this operation. If I just lift here and do nothing in the rear, this is like a big seesaw, the back is going to want to dip down. So we're going to go to the rear of the vehicle and talk about how we best counter crib this to facilitate that pivot point and perform this lift. All right, so this is the area we want to fill with our cribbing. This space right here, the guys are going to come in with their step chalk. They're going to slide them in and make contact with the roof rail there, part of the roof. Okay. As we lift from the front now, the weight's going to be distributed on our cribbing, and we've sufficiently filled that void. Okay. Tim's also going to come in over here with a block and a wedge and just fill the void under the B post just to give us a little additional ground contact. All right, so we've sufficiently counter cribbed the vehicle in preparation for our lift. All right, we're going to move back towards the front and set up to do our lifting. And our capture stacks, our progress capture, are probably going to be again somewhere in the area of the front fender, taking advantage of that shock tower. Right, we've got a little stability there. So as they lift from the front, the guys are going to be constructing box cribbing on either side to kind of cap capture progress as we come up. All right, so we're set up here in the front of the vehicle on the short axis. As you can see, initially our ground contact is not great. So Eric's got the tool in position. Initially, he's just going to lift up a little bit. The guys are going to chase in with the step chock. So all he's looking to do is create a little space. Ideally, he'd like to get the tip and the TL9 deeper under the car. So we're going to come up a little bit. All right, the boys are going to capture it with these step chocks. All right, now he can get under deeper and really get the, the lift we need. So we built the platform, we can now slide our step chocks in. Eric can come up a little more with the spreader. All right, the car's been captured. We take a walk around here and take a look on the inside of the vehicle now. We've achieved enough height with the nose of the vehicle, with the roof rail, where we can go ahead and extricate this victim. Again, operating in a timely and efficient, safe and stable manner. All right, just to recap what we did here, we did a, a short access, single point parallel lift. You know, our objective was to get the whole nose of the car up evenly because of the way that our victim was positioned. Uh, we couldn't really do a, a tilting lift, we opted for a parallel lift. Some important points, we counter cribbed the rear with the step chocks under the roof rails there. All right. uh, we did a little bit of pro progression lift here just to create some ground uh, contact to get the tool in deeper. And of course, uh, we stabilized as we went. 
But at the end of the day, you can see we were able to get more than sufficient height to extricate the person in a timely manner. So I'm Paul DeBartolomeo with T&J Rescue Enterprises. Thank you for watching.